G'day, welcome to Market Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video about um, broken case extraction. Um, well, actually, it's all in reference to a video I did a, just a couple of weeks ago about removing a stuck case. Um, there's a video there that shows how to remove a case that's been over pressure for whatever reason it's jammed in the chamber and you're trying to get it out. So check that out if you want to know that there. But through that video, there are a fair few people that are asking a question as to how do you remove a broken case or a, a one that's had a case head separation. I've got in front of us a case head separation. So the case heads come off um, and the shell would have still been in the um, chamber. And I suppose how to get it out, but really that aren't, that's a, there's, there's probably a few details that go with it. Because the best way how to get it out is to not get it in there. So avoiding it actually happening is the is the smart way to go around it. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen on occasions, and I'll go through a little bit of that later in the video. But I suppose I'd start with how you get it out. Um, listen, the proper way to get it out is have the proper tool. Um, and there is a few different proper tools. Um, one would be a a cartridge specific tool, which there certainly are those. You can buy them from Brownells, you can buy them from UTG, you can buy them from um, Pacific Tool and Gauge. There's a few places where you can buy the specific tool. And that is, I'll put an image on here, but that is a tool that you put a chamber it like a round, you put it in, it clicks in to the front. So it's got a little, little barb, a little a spring loaded barb that goes in in front of the shell case. So it just goes right in the neck there. And then you can pull it back out and the actual, it has a little thing for the, for your bolt to be able to hook, your extractor to be able to hook up and pull it out. And in most cases, the shell isn't going to be super tight in there. So it'll come out normally. Um, the next bit is a um, caliber specific rather than a cartridge specific, a caliber spe specific um, tool. And that is, has a similar little little hook in the front of it. So you can put it in and put it in and, and get it out like that. And whether it's got a tap system, which you'll find on some of the military ones on it, a little slide hammer or whatever means that is in the specific tool you're talking about where it can pull it out. Some of those have the ability to clasp a little bit harder on the front of the, of the neck. Um, some have the ability to um, be um, used with, with, with for, to create some more force to be able to get things out for cases that are jammed harder. But those are the correct ways um, or the, the proper tool, I should say. Now with that, generally, it's not something that most people would need. Um, like I said, it's really a case of avoiding it happening. But in situations where you're more likely to run into that sort of stuff, then probably a, a, calipus, a sorry, cartridge specific tool is your way out of that jam, if that's something that you see a little bit of. Um, now, I suppose beyond that point, then there's all sorts of other ways of doing this, and whether that's a, a push rod that's been slightly modified to be able to tap something out, whether that's, I think I've heard old school ways of filling the brass up with lead um, and then being able to tap it out. There's various forms of ways around getting the, a, a broken piece of brass out. But my main call would be if you're in that situation and you don't have an easy way around it, would be to take it to your gunsmith. You don't want to be poking around there too much with pieces of steel and things like that and damaging your rifle through the fact of it's all fine, it just needs that brass taken out. So don't get to extraordinary levels of shoving steel down things or jamming taps in places or doing things which there are other ways around it. I'm not going to go into them, but be careful with the fact this is still an important part of your rifle and getting a piece of brass out um, is, should cause no damage whatsoever. So be aware of that with whatever process you're going through there. So I suppose to go into the, the next bit, and as I said, the best way to get a piece of brass out is not to have it in there. So not to have it in there is to understand why it was in there. Why is a piece of brass in there? The most common, or I suppose the, the, the reasons from years gone by would be um, a poorly set up headspace in your rifle. What actually happens if you, uh, I suppose I'll do some, some images. What actually happens is when, when you look at this through this, the, this case head, the case head itself, if you ever get to see one, is a nice heavy brass. It then tapers out. 
So it tapers out from that heavy base and comes down to the thinner spot, which is right where you see a case head separation. Um, when you get brass flow, which is what happens when that explosion, when the, when the case fires and all that pressure and all that gas forces out the front and forces the bullet out, it tends to cause a bit of growth in the brass. It's stretching it to the point of flowing it. Um, what that means is that you've actually got enough force and enough pressure that it actually encourages the, the brass molecules to travel down the way where the explosion is happening or where that force is going. Um, in whatever form that is, whether it's just pushing it forward or it's making it flow forward, it's taking away from down the back. And that, that thinnest spot is where it goes from the heavy head down to the walls. In that thinnest spot there is where it comes from. So that's where you'll see the case head separation. So the most common reasons for it to happen is that you have poor um, head spacing, which means that um, in, in whatever form that is, whether that is the head spacing, and I suppose it gets a little complicated in something like a rimmed cartridge, which is the, the way the rim cartridge is designed to be head spaced was from the rim to the bolt face. So then everything in front of that gets to grow. So that's a situation where you certainly see this growth at that point of where you'll get case head separation. Um, there is ways with a rimmed case, you can go forward and head space off the shoulder like normal, that'll help with that side of things, but that's one place it'll grow. If you have case head separation, uh, sorry, uh, head spacing, which is simply not done right anyway, the, bo the, the projectile wasn't set up, sorry, the, um, the round or the, the rifle wasn't set up properly, probably more likely to happen in something with an adjustable headspace, so something like a Savage where you have a nut there, and if that's if someone's put it together and put it together wrong, um, it can also happen in the normal Remington 700 where it has been chambered wrong, someone has made a mistake there, but that can be that you can actually get case head separation on a brand new round. So there's just too much growth and it'll pull things apart because there's just too much growth to happen instantly. Um, it's also called a case rupture is what we're talking about in this situation. Um, and I suppose the, the, the old military rounds, old military rifles, all sorts of weird things can happen to where you run into these sort of problems, but they will tend to be things that are happening straight away and part of what's tested when that rifle goes through its first process of being fired or being reactivated. Um, the more common place you'll find case head separation in the normal rifle, in something that's regularly used in a, in a rifle where everything's set up properly, but you're still getting case head separation, is probably in two places. One is in the improved case situation, so when you are taking and mod fire forming a case to start off with. Um, if you don't get that right in your fire forming, and sometimes even if you do, you're after a lot of change in that brass, a lot of force that's going through immediately. So it can be damaging itself and massively shortening its life right from the beginning, even though you won't have clues right at the beginning. There'll be too much growth in that case, and it's managed to get to where it takes away too much from that weakest point between the, the wall of the case and the head of the case. Um, the other place, and I suppose the most common place, and certainly the one I have in front of me here, is really, this was about an improved case. This was my Gibbs probably five years ago or four years ago when this happened. Um, and I was still, I, first time I'd gone down the road of an improved cartridge, but I was also trying to get a little bit more out of the brass I had. And this was at five firings. Now, some people might think that five firings is, oh, you, I get heaps more. I have my 6.5 Creedmoor and I get 15, or I know a guy with a 2.23, I think it's at over 100 firings on his brass. Um, the end of the day, the, when you're up close, when you're pushing it harder, then your brass is doing more. If you have to, if you have to trim it regularly, this is one of the clues that something's going on. If you are fire forming, and then trying to run your brass pretty hard, you can get growth that you won't necessarily see that can still end up in the same place. Um, really, the trying to get lots of fires, lots of firings out of a piece of brass means you're asking more out of it. Now, in some cases, it'll work. In other cases, especially if you've got to do a reasonable amount of gra brass prep each time, the brass is wearing out. It's as simple as that. It's changing shape. Um, 
my call would be what's brass worth it's it's if if you're firing that much that you have to save your brass and have to get 10 firings out of it um, there's you've got to get some other details right to get to that place I suppose without being judgmental on how other people do their sort of stuff to me five or six firings is all I need to see um, and then generally there's other things going on um, it's nice just to change over brass and put a new light in and go through that process equally I'm not doing a huge amount of work or trying to train with that particular rifle more than another particular rifle so it's probably a little bit easier for me but that's a place where I find if you stop there, you don't have these problems. Uh, this lot here, I'll, I'll show you some images closely, but shows really pretty much the progress of it. We start at one piece of brass where it was looking like this. Um, out of that same box of ammo is a piece of brass here where I started to see some deformation in that spot. So you can just see on that brass, tiny bit of deformation around there that if you weren't paying attention to it, you might not realize what it is. Um, I have actually gone through and cleaned this brass up. Like I said, it's, it's four or five years old. Um, but you can see the little wobble in that line as to what's going on. This is, yeah, this went through a firing and this was too far. Didn't case head separate, but it was too far. It was actually out of the same box as this one here. This one happened um, and when I, looked at, when I looked at the brass prior, I found that a couple looked like this one here where it had actually separated there was just a line there, it just looks like a dark line until you clean it. Um, but then you can see thoroughly, this one we obviously, um, no, we went through the resizer and um, then you could see it really clearly. But that's what it looked like. And this is the piece of brass that broke and fell off in the front there. Yes, so it's it happened to all of us. Um, the main call would be with that sort of stuff is like I said, the main way to answer this, the main way to not get to this place is really, to, I suppose, to understand what you're doing. In improved cases, it's much more likely to happen. So less life is already happening generally when you're improving a case, but that is also specific to your setup. Um, as for, um, it can also happen in whatever it is, whether it's a 6.5 Creedmoor or 30.06 or whatever it is, it can happen. And even in something like a straight wall case, actually it's not something that's that uncommon with something like a straight wall case in one of the safari rounds or something like that, where you'll find that because there's no shoulder to stop the growth of the brass um, and with a fair bit of pressure and one of the high power, the, 40, the um, 458 lot or something like that, if you're trying to get lots of firings out of that brass, and you're running it pretty hot, you'll tend to be able to pick it up through how much you're having to trim. If you're having to trim it regularly, then you probably need to keep a close eye on what's going on in the case wall side of things. And my call would be, once again, I come back to the four or five firings, what's a piece of brass worth? Um, especially if you're considering the hassle you're about to go through the moment you get a case head separation. But if it is something that is your setup, that's how it works, this occasionally happens and it randomly happens, you can't control it, then there are proper tools you can get. So you look in the Brown, Brownells, you look in the gunsmith tool companies or tooling companies, you can find, like I said, whether they be caliber specific or they be cartridge specific, there is this sort of stuff to get it out and get it out in a professional sense without any other damage. Uh, but my call would be to avoid it at all cost. Anyway, guys, that's my um, fairly quick one on the on a ruptured case, a broken case, a case head separation, how to get them out, and and really, like I said, the best way to, to get them out is to not to get them in there. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking on the video, and we'll catch you next time.